Hello everyone and thank you for joining us today. My name is Stephen Primo. I am the president and founder of SpecialistTrading.com and once again thanks for taking time out of your Thursday uh, during the trading markets to come join us in this presentation. Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with my website Specialist Trading, uh, Specialist Trading is your premier online source for education. Uh, this is education in trading just about any market you can think of from stocks to the e-minis to the forex markets and in any time frame as well. So it doesn't matter if you're a seasoned pro who's been trading for a long time, 20, 30 years, or someone who just started out day trading. We have strategies and as you see here, insights, wisdom, and trading strategies from the floor. And just to give you a little background about that, I have been trading for roughly about 36 years now. I, I started my trading career on the floor of the Pacific Stock Exchange. I was on the floor for a total of 16 years and nine of those years I was a specialist for Donaldson, Lufkin and Jen Rett, one of the premier uh, brokerage houses on Wall Street at the time. So hence the name Specialist Trading. Uh, I left the floor in the mid-90s to manage money and to trade my own account and I've traded and seen just about anything and everything imaginable and roughly about five years ago I started Specialist Trading as you see here which basically just teaches and uh, instructs all of my students and members all the things that I've accumulated in my 36 years of trading. So. What I want to share with you today is something that can be applied to virtually, once again, any market or any time frame, so it doesn't matter what type of a trader or even investor you may be. What we're going to be talking about today are the three main components of a successful trading strategy. And we really feel strongly at Specialist Trading is that you need to have all of these components in place. At the very least, you should have two of them, but it's probably better if you have all three of these components in order to have a successful trading strategy. And when we say successful, I'll go into that in just a a few short minutes and describe exactly what we mean by being a successful trading strategy. So this is a uh, going to be a great presentation today. Get out your pencils and paper because you can write these down and start to apply these three components as early as next week. But before we begin, I ask that you please take a moment to view our disclaimer. We're required to show you this. I'm going to show you a lot of performance results. I'm going to show you a lot of charts using this uh, these three components. But please remember that we can in no way guarantee that any of these results will be repeated in the future. So as you're taking a moment to view the disclaimer in front of you, I'd also like to make a few announcements. I know uh, I see some names here. A lot of people have attended my presentations in the past, but there are quite a few uh, new names here. And uh, I just want to uh, let you know that I love to answer any and all of your questions, but I want to just make sure that you leave them toward the very end of the presentations. I know a lot of uh, presenters and educators like to answer questions while the presentation is going on. I prefer to wait at the very end. Many times if you kind of wait for the next slide or, or next chapter in the presentation, your question will be answered. So please write them down if you happen to have any questions and uh, I promise I'll get to them at the very end of the presentation. This won't be real long, roughly in the next half hour, 40 minutes. Now if you happen to come up with a question once we've concluded, don't worry, I will give you a phone number as well as an email address where you can contact us and ask us any questions once we've concluded as well. So, lots of ways to answer your questions, but once again, for those of you who may have just attended and joined us right now, please wait till the very end to ask any questions. All right, now as I stated, I uh, began my career trading on the floor and I struggled my first year of trading, so I want to share with you the main things that were taught to me that were able to turn my trading around, and these were tips and techniques that were taught to me by my mentors. This is the specialist edge. So my goal with specialist trading is to teach you how to trade with this edge as well. And this edge is rooted in simplicity. All right? We're not really trying to, to make things as complicated as possible. We don't have a number of, uh, as you'll see in these three components I'm going to be sharing with you, we don't have a number of rules where it gets so complicated and so convoluted that you don't even understand why you're going long or short. It's extremely simple. All of our techniques and methods have probably no more than five or six rules associated. We're probably only using one or two indicators at most. So the more you keep things simple, the more you really strip away the things which my mentors taught me were useless noise, the better you will get to that road towards which leads towards success. And as I said earlier, what success means is not about hitting home runs or becoming a millionaire in the next six months to a year. I know plenty of traders who, who made hundreds of thousands if not millions of dollars on the floor and then they lost it all. So the goal is not to see as much money you can rack up in the next three to six months. The goal is to try and be consistent. What we're looking for at Specialist Trading is looking to hit singles, not home runs. Now every once in a while we will hit a home run and that's great, but our goal, our main motivation is to hit these small singles 
so that we can be trading 10, 20, 30 years down the road. So this is the, this is the main uh, groundwork of Specialist Edge, keeping things simple so we can achieve that uh, consistency in our trading. All right, so let's begin today's presentation. And we're going to talk about the three main components of a successful trading strategy. And to show you how simple these components are, I'm sure many of you have probably heard them in the past, or maybe some of you are incorporating them in your trading already, but you don't seem to be on that road to success. Most of the time it's because you were taught the incorrect way in which to apply them. So a lot of what I'm going to share with you today, you've probably seen or heard or are currently using. But please remember that we're going to break them down as simple as possible and show you how to use them in their best uh, possible way. All right, so let's start with the first component. This is component number one, and it's basically just being in sync with the trend. Now, I know a lot of you have heard this before. You say, well, this is nothing new. I, I trade with a trend, Steve, and I'm still not successful. I think the reason why most people have difficulty, even though they try to trade with the trend or they've given up on it, is because there are 101 ways in which to find out what the trend is. One trader's uptrend can be another trader's downtrend. So that's the reason why we feel most people have uh, trouble with this concept, because they can't really find or be in sync with what the true trend is. So we've broken that down to the simplest way in which to define trend. And so let's show you a chart here. Let's say you're looking at this chart just off face value. We've, we've purposely deleted what it is, uh, what time frame or whatever, just, to, just to, for educational purposes, just to give you an idea of how people can so easily become confused. Now, someone just looking at this chart off face value would say, well, Steve, there is no real trend. We're just kind of basically in a range here. We're going up and then back down and then up and then back down. So if I were looking at this, I'd say there's no trend in place. But at specialist trading, as I stated, we have what we feel is our most powerful way of discerning trend, and that's simply by adding a 50-period simple moving average. Okay? So we want you, regardless of what time frame, if you're trading a five-minute chart or a monthly chart, you should plot a 50-period simple moving average on that chart. Okay? So regardless if you're a day trader or an investor, always have a 50-period simple moving average on your chart. And then once you plot it, ask yourself, where is price in relation to that 50-period simple moving average? All right, I'll say that once again. You may want to write this down. Where is price in relation to the 50-period simple moving average? Because if you ask yourselves before you take a trade, you'll only come up with two possible scenarios. Either price is above or price is below. Now, if price is above, well, this means we're in somewhat of an uptrend. Okay, and if price is below, it means we're in somewhat of a downtrend. That's it. So we want to keep things as simple as possible. We'll go into a little bit more detail as we go down the road in today's presentation. But remember, this is the easiest, most powerful way we know of discerning the trend by simply applying a 50-period simple moving average. Okay, so that's component number one. Now, let's go to component number two. Now that we find out what the trend is, we only want to look for signals within pullbacks. So in other words, if we're in an uptrend, we're only going to be looking to buy, right? So if price is above the 50-period simple moving average, we're only going to be looking to buy. But once we have a buy signal, we only want to look for those signals that are in pullbacks. Well, what exactly is a pullback, for those of you who aren't really familiar with that? Well, let's look at the same chart once again. Now, if we look at this prior to, uh, you know, we had some movement, if we take it a little bit uh, more back, a couple of weeks or so, we see here that we are in the starting of this range, but someone could say, well, my strategy has projected that this is a breakout right here. We had some type of resistance, and on this breakout right here, we should be purchasing because this is, means we're going to go higher. And we're above the 50 period, so this is actually a valid uh, strategy according to uh, what someone may look at. And so this is where they'd want to buy once we have broken out of this little short-term resistance. So you step in and you buy, okay? But then what happens? Does this look familiar? I'm sure this has happened to a lot of you. I'm sure this happens to more uh, to many of you more often than not. The minute you get in, it's almost as if the, the uh, trade, tradable unit you were looking at goes the opposite direction. Well, actually, this is more of a blessing than a curse because, remember, we're looking to purchase in pullbacks. We want to find the signals in a pullback. So a pullback is simply when the price pulls back towards that 50-period simple moving average. That's where you want to look for signals, not on little breakouts or any kind of convoluted theory or when indicators are crossing over and things uh, of that nature. We're looking to see that we have some type of sell-off or decline in price 
that's when we're going to look to buy. Okay, so we don't want to look to buy up here. We want to look to buy somewhere in this lower range. So any signals that are generated or produced while we are pulling back are the valid ones. Those are the ones we want to take. Okay, now once again, if we're going short, well obviously price will be below this 50 period to move in average and a pullback will be the opposite. It'll be a rise in price or a little blip in price and it'll be pulling back to the upside towards the 50 period to move in average. I'll show you some examples in just a few seconds. All right, so that's component number two. Now that we know what side of the market to be on and now that we know that we want to look for signals only in pullbacks, well, what's component number three to a successful trading strategy? We want to only enter upon the confirmation of trend. You see, so many times you'll have the right idea. Whatever you're trading, whether it's a stock, a future, or the forex market, you'll say uh, that your strategy uh, predicts it should be going up, and then you buy, and it goes straight down. But then eventually it goes back up again. What matters is that you are not really wrong. The, the uh, tradable unit, whatever you're trading, actually went in the desired direction. It was just that your entry was misplaced. It was incorrect. So we want to fine-tune our entries. So we only want to enter once we get confirmation of the trend. But what exactly does that mean? Well, let's look at that same chart again. And if you recall, we originally wanted to purchase somewhere up here, but then we had this little sell-off, or another way to define that, that's our pullback. So this is where we want to look to buy. Now remember, it doesn't matter what strategy it is. It could be one of mine. It could be something that you come up with, or it could be a strategy that uh, you've got from another educator. That's fine. All we want to make sure is that our strategy is somewhere signaling a buy signal, somewhere in this downward move here. And once it does, we're not going to buy at the market, or we're not going to place a limit order. What we want to do is make sure that we confirm that we're going back up again, that the pullback has concluded. So how do we do that? Well, we're only going to go long once we trade one tick, or if we're trading the forex, one pip above the previous bar's high. So let's say uh, your strategy is based off Fibonacci, or let's say it was based off some news event, gave a signal to go long somewhere here. Rather than just simply buying at the market the way you would have done in the past, you're saying, well, I'm only going to buy if we trade one tick above. And as long as we have a buy signal still in effect, but we do not trade one tick above, we continue just to track it and wait until we do trade above, such as this bar right here. So if your buy signal was still saying it's right to go long, whatever we're looking at, whatever this chart is, well, that's where you would purchase it, right there. And then ultimately, we have the resumption of trend. It's going back in our favor. You see, we wanted to wait for confirmation that we're going back up, that the pullback has concluded. And the only way to do that is for price to trade one tick above the previous bar's high. Now, obviously, if we were going short, we'd want to wait for price to trade one tick below the previous bar's low. And I'll show you some charts of that in just a few moments. But see, it wasn't wrong to be long this chart. So your, your scenario uh, of, of signal generating a long uh, purchase wasn't wrong. It was just your entry. There's no way you should have been entering up here. You just fine-tuned your entry until you had the confirmation of trend and then went back up. Okay, now I know a lot of you may have questions. Once again, for those of you who may have entered late, I see some people came in a little bit later. Remember, hold your questions till the very end in the next 15 minutes or so. I'm going to show you a lot more charts so you can understand this process, and then I'll answer any questions you may have, okay? But I'm not going to take questions at this moment. All right, so we went through the three components, all right? We want to make sure that we are in sync with the trend. How do we do that? We always apply a 50-period simple moving average. If price is above, as you see here in this chart, well, this means that we're only looking for buy signals because our trend is up. If price is below, then we're only going to be looking for sell signals. It's that simple, okay? Right off the bat, you don't have to do all this logic or look at the higher time frame to see what the lower time frame is doing. It's all right in front of you. You know if price is above or price is below. And then secondly, if your uh, strategy generates a signal, don't simply buy at the market or place a limit somewhere wait for confirmation. What we want to do is we want to see that the signal is generated in this pullback area, component number two. The pullback is a little sell-off, and then we simply wait for confirmation, which would be right here, to enter. Now let me show you some more examples of this. Let's start out with stocks. These are stock examples that are fairly recent in the last month or so. Let's start out with Tiffany. Now this is going back just about a month or so, the end of, um, this, the end of February exactly. 
And first thing we ask is where's price in relation to the 50 period simple moving average? And safe to say price is above, right? So this means we're not even going to think of shorting Tiffany. We're not going to think of uh, selling it if we're long. We're going to look to buy. All right. Now, someone who would, it just goes off news, let's say, say some earnings report came out or some announcement, uh, would have said, boy, it's taking off. I don't want to miss this thing. We've just broken out of some resistance here. I'm going to jump in and buy. And this is what people would normally do because they get a little bit uh, nervous. They think they're going to miss the boat, and they, they get greedy, so they jump in, right, when it's going straight up. Remember we said we don't want to buy when things are going up. We actually want to buy when things are going down. But let's say when... Uh, if price is above the 50, you purchased here, look what would have happened. You would have purchased, and in the next two or three days, it would have gone lower. Now, it would have gone that much lower, a couple of points, but I know as well as you that the minute you enter into a trade, you want to see things go in your direction. It's the worst feeling in the world to buy a stock or a future or the Forex uh, currency pairs, and then it goes the exact opposite direction. It's the worst feeling in the world. You start to doubt yourself. You start to say, boy, I just wish I had never pulled the trigger and I wouldn't be uh, in the hole right now. So I know as well as you that you probably, after two days of losses, would have second-guessed yourself and would have exited Tiffany, which would have been the wrong thing to do. It wasn't that you were wrong in getting a buy signal. It was, once again, that your entry was displaced at the wrong point. So we want to use the confirmation. We want to wait for a pullback, which is right here, a small little sell-off. This is where we're looking for the signal or we're looking for entry in our signal. And then we simply apply these little bars that I put here. This just means we wait for price to trade one tick above. Rather than simply buy at the market, we wait for price to trade. And as long as we still think it's okay to buy Tiffany, we're just going to simply wait to see once it trades above. So a week later, we finally did trade above here. We didn't close above. It doesn't matter whether we close above or not, but we traded above. And there's where your entry would have been, right here, as opposed to right here. Okay. Now, you're not really saving a lot, but what you're really doing is you're entering when the trend continued to resume in its upward course. You see, you would have had a much better night sleeping knowing that you had purchased it, and you only had maybe one down day, and then after that, it was off to the races, as opposed to having maybe one, two, three down days, at which point you probably would have you know, thrown in the towel and stopped yourself out. So, as we stated, this technique is great for entry because it fine-tunes your entry. You're in sync with the trend, and your signal is, is purchasing within a pullback. Now, this same type of uh, technique, the same type of methodology works if you're going short. Now, here's Apple. We all know that Apple's been acting miserably in the last year. Okay. Now, safe to say it's below the 50-period simple moving average. So there's no reason why we're going to want to bottom fish Apple. There's no reason why we should even think of buying it until we're above that 50 periods of a moving average. So you say, okay, well, I'm going to listen to Steve. I'm going to only go short it. Now, let's say your strategy gets a sell signal right here. Why? Because we broke this low. So most people would say we broke the short-term low, which we've done a, a many times before. So I'm going to sell. But look what would have happened. It would have gone straight up. And I'm almost definitely sure you would have been stopped out uh, with uh, Apple going straight up in the next two or three days. Now, once again, it's not that so many times that your signal is wrong, it's that your entry is wrong. Remember, we don't want to enter on breakouts to the downside or breakouts to the upside. What we want to do is apply this confirmation method. Once we see we have this pullback, now here's a pullback to the upside because price is pulling back to the 50 period simple moving average. But this time, we're waiting for price to trade one tick below the previous bar's low, and it does this right here on this day. Okay? And as you can see, that would have been your sell signal to go short, and look what happens. All right? Off to the races in your desired direction. Now, once again, it would not have been wrong to go short Apple. But we know that most people, had they shorted here at 500, they couldn't have stood a loss of 50 or 60 points going against them. They would have thrown in the towel and stopped themselves out. Much better to wait for the pullback, wait for price to trade one tick below as it did right here, which was at the beginning of the year, this was just a couple of months ago, and then short roughly right here on the opening, and then see a nice 40 or 50 gain in the next two weeks. All right, so let's now go to another market. Let's trade the E-mini S&P futures. I know we have a lot of day traders that like to trade intraday uh, on the E-mini. Well, the same concept applies any market, any time frame. 
This was, uh, I believe, the 8th, which was just a couple of weeks ago, a uh, 15-minute chart of the E-mini. Now, price is above the 50-period simple moving average. Even though we may cross below it or intersect it, the majority of price is above, so we're only looking to go long. Someone once uh, again could say, well, we have some resistance right here. I'm going to buy if the E-mini goes above on the 15-minute chart. Okay? So on the opening of the next day, what happens? Let's say you have a stop order in there, you have a limit to buy, and then guess what happens? It gaps up, and you would be purchasing on the opening roughly about 1545. And then the minute you get in, in the next hour or so, the E-mini goes straight down. Okay? Look familiar? This is why most people lose is because they don't have the wrong idea of what they think the market's going to do. Their entry is often misplaced and, you know, many times they're on the wrong side of the market. But here you're on the right side of the market. It is the right thing to go long. But rather than just simply buy on a breakout, wait for that pullback, which is right here. Okay? So once you get the signal, if it trades above there, then you're going to enter. All right? So we haven't entered. So we haven't even entered into the trade yet, and we've already been open roughly about uh, an hour or so, almost an hour. So on this next bar, guess what happens? On the next 15-minute bar, we traded above, so this would have been our entry signal. You would have entered roughly about 1541, and look what happens, seven points uh, in the next day or so. Okay? But most importantly, you would have saved yourself a lot of grief had you entered here and then exited by being stopped out and then seeing the market go in your desired direction. It's one of the worst things that can ever happen to a trader is the moment you get out, it goes in the direction you wanted it to go. So that's why all of these three components really help to make your trading more successful by being consistent. The same thing works on the downside. Here's a, uh, an older chart of the E-mini going back about a couple of months. As we see here, we are below the 50 period simple moving average, so we're not even going to think about buying the E-mini on a five-minute time frame. We're only looking to go short. Someone, once again, could have said, well, we broke this support here. Uh, I like to trade Fibonacci uh, in resistance and support, and this is a strong support, so I'm going to go short. Well, had you gone short, you would have had to sit through this nice little uptrend here uh, of about four or five points, and most likely you would have gotten stopped out. Much rather to say, well, once we have this little pullback towards the 50-period simple moving average, I'm going to apply this confirmation method, and once we trade one tick below, that's where I'll enter. All right? So you would have shorted right here. You would have roughly waited just about a half an hour later to get in, and then look what happens. See, the beauty of using all of these things is that you get in the right side, you have a high probability entry point, and then you have confirmation that once you enter, most likely, not guaranteed, but most likely, the trend continues in your direction. All right, let's look at some Forex examples. We know we have some Forex traders here. Now, Forex examples, uh, this uh, work just as well using the same techniques. Here's what we call a common type of uh, flag or pennant formation. It's just a high-level consolidation, and a lot of traders who like to use support and resistance love to trade off this because they say, well, look at the resistance right here. The Euro-Yen on an hourly time frame cannot get through it. So once we break through it, it's going to go sky high. So what you would do is wait for it to break through, and that's your entry point, right? Well, not according to the three components. Remember, we only want to buy in a pullback. And since we are above the 50-period simple moving average, we need to see price pull back towards that. So we would not have purchased it on this little breakout right here. And look what would have happened. Had you, you would have had maybe an hour or two of upside momentum in your direction, not very much, though, but then it would have been followed by a large sell-off. So now, someone who had entered too soon using that technique would have been stopped out. But you, being savvy traders and knowing the three components of a successful trading system, would say, well, listen, here's our pullback. I'm going to wait. The, the strategy is saying it's going to go up, and I still believe in my strategy, so I'm going to wait for price to trade one pip above. And then I'll enter. Well, we traded one pip above about three or four hours later. Your entry would have been right here at roughly 104.50, and then look what happened. 170 pips in the next day or so, okay? Roughly a little over $1,700 or $1,800 trading one large contract. So that's how simple it is using the same concept. And if you wanted to look at daily bars, the exact same thing. We're short because we're below the 50-period simple moving average. Rather than go short on this breakout to the... Uh, downside here, uh, when we break support, we're not going to sell. We're going to wait for the pullback. We're going to wait for some type of rise, anywhere from 2 to 10 bars in the market, 
We'll apply this technique that we're only going to short once we trade one pip below. And then once we see that, that's our point to entry. Okay? And then 600 pips to the downside. Roughly uh, $6,000. So that's how simple it is if you use these three components. Things to remember, though. Let's review. Here are the three main components if you want to have a successful, by successful we mean consistent trading strategy. First of all, you must be in sync with the trend. The reason why most traders lose, even though they try to be in sync with the trend, is because they're using a faulty method for discerning what the trend is. The easiest and most powerful way we know at Specialist Trading for discerning the trend is by simply plotting a 50 period simple moving average. If price is above, if the majority of price is above, whatever time frame, whatever market you're looking at, well then the trend is up and you'll only be looking for buy signals. If price is below or the majority of prices are below the 50, then you're only looking to go short. You're looking for sell signals. Okay? Now, once you get a signal that's generated in sync with the trend, don't just simply buy a signal that you know, you know, apply towards a breakout or a bust out or, or something that has you put a, a limit or open limit order in there. Look for signals on pullbacks. This means the price is going to pull back towards that 50 period simple moving average. Okay? And then once you find that pullback, the only way to enter should be applied with the confirmation of trend. That means that if you're going long, only buy once price trades one tick or one pip above the previous bar's high. If you're going short, only go short once you see price trade one tick or one pip below the previous bar's low. Okay, that's how simple it is, those three main components. But like everything else, there are some extremely uh, important things to remember. These are points to remember because I know a lot of you may be, you know, your eyes may be lighting up right now. You may be getting extremely excited saying, I want to go and trade this in the next couple of hours we have remaining in the market. Firstly, these are not strategies. As you, if you notice, the title to this uh, webinar was not the three main components of a successful strategy uh, that, uh, that are a successful strategy, I should say. No, these are components to a strategy. But in order to have a full strategy in place, there are other components that must be utilized, that must be applied, such as stop placement. Where do you place your stop? How about exit signals? You should have more than one exit signal in case the market really takes off or in case you want to be trading conservatively. How about money management? How many shares should you be trading? How many lots of uh, contracts should you be trading? These are all important things that go into the making of a successful strategy. We just shared with you three of the most important ones we feel at Specialist Trading, but you also have to know the others as well in order to have the full-fledged strategy in order to start trading. So please remember, these are not strategies. You can apply these to your current strategy or you can build a strategy already based on these three components. But we feel the best thing to do, if I can take a couple of minutes, is to become a member of Specialist Trading. Why? Because all of our strategies, all of our tips and techniques incorporate these three components. So there's not a strategy or technique you won't find that we have for any of our markets, uh, any of our courses that doesn't have these three components already applied within them. Now we, once again, are an educational company. We supply you with courses in stock trading, e-mini trading, as well as forex trading. Now each one of these courses comes with upwards of 10 specific and different strategies for trading that specific market. Anything from strategies that go well with uh, intraday trading to strategies that are best suited for investors to strategies that are best suited for swing traders. Now, each of these, uh, as I said, each of these courses comes with upwards of, of 10 stocks or 10 different strategies for the different markets. But that can be rather expensive. These courses run upwards anywhere from uh, 25 up to $5,000. So what we've done is we've started to uh, supply you with the individual courses, such as you see here. This is probably one of our best courses uh, for trading any market, any time frame. This is strategy number four because it so uh, easily applies into stocks, to e-minis, to the ETF markets, to forex markets. Uh, now this is a great, great strategy. I'll show you a couple of examples of recent trades, but should you decide to become a member of just this individual course, uh, this roughly runs anywhere from uh, $695 to $1,000. We're dropping the price down to $495. It's an extremely cheap price, and we urge you to take advantage of this because we're only going to have this discount for a couple of days. But this is a, a, a great discount for all the attendees today attending this presentation. One of the, or many of the great things about becoming a member of our courses is that you get instant course access. You don't have to wait uh, for something to be shipped to you or mailed to you. Uh, you can be, uh, once you sign up, you can be applying and looking at the rules in, in as little as uh, the next half hour if you'd like. 
This comes with detailed instructions. As you saw today, I like to give a lot of detail and uh, to information and to teaching. This comes with five separate videos for learning how to trade this strategy. Uh, we teach you all the entries, all the exits, and all the different stop placements for trading anywhere from conservatively to aggressively. We supply you with signal alerts so that if you want to see how it's doing in a particular uh, market on daily basis, we will provide you with an email the night before telling you where to enter and where to place your stop. Also, this comes with weekly video trading lessons, uh, such as today. Today, I, I talked about three components. Uh, one week, I may talk about something else, talk to you about a stop placement or different exit techniques or different things about how to trade the markets. Uh, this comes also with a free Metastock add-on. For, for you Metastock users, you can get the add-on, which will automatically generate your buy and sell arrows, regardless of the time frame. And then lastly, and most importantly, you have uh, free access to my personal email. So anytime you'd like to email me, ask me a question, during the trading day, during the weekends, it doesn't matter. You can email me and I'll get right back to you as soon as possible. Now once again, this course is really inexpensive at $695. We're dropping it even further down $200 down to $495. But for all the attendees today, remember that's for a limited time only. Now I'd like to just share with you a couple of signals uh, that were generated using this strategy. Once again, this strategy applies all the three components we talked about today. But these are actual signals that our members would have seen and uh, many of them took advantage of. If we look at Facebook right here, this is going to uh, looking at two signals that were generated on daily bars. And as we see here at the end of uh, January, just a month or so ago, we issued a buy signal with strategy number four on the 28th. Okay, uh, you can see uh, this should be the 13th. Uh, we have the wrong typo there, but this was on the 28th of, um, I, I'm sorry, this is December 28th. So this is a great buy signal, as you saw. We have the pullback. We're above the 50-period simple moving average, and look what happened. We roughly went up from 26 all the way up to 32. So it was a, it was a great, a great buy signal there. You could have taken advantage of that, but then had you missed it, well, guess what? We issued all of our members on the 20th of February, just about a month ago, a sell signal to go short uh, Facebook, roughly around the $28 level and roughly that came down to three, uh, three points within the next month or so. So this is how easily strategy number four works for stocks. You want to try and apply it to intraday trading? Well, it works just as well. Here's an hourly chart of the E-mini going back to the beginning of March. As you see here, there was a buy signal generated on March 1st, and then on the 4th, another buy signal, and the market went straight up in the next day or so. If we look at something that happened just roughly uh, just a few days ago on the 19th of March, we see here that we were issued three separate signals to go short the E-mini on a 10-minute time frame. And each one of these would have generated profits. Or if you wanted to trade aggressively, you could have stayed in the trade all day long and roughly uh, been short at uh, 1548 all the way down to 1532 if you'd like. And then lastly, uh, a signal generating the Canadian dollar going back to the beginning of February, as we see here. We have this nice pullback. Here's our entry. And in the coming days, we went up 215 pips, or roughly uh, about $2,200 if you're trading one contract in the Canadian dollar. And the British pound also gave a great sell signal as well. This was going back to the beginning of February. As you see here, they issued a sell signal to go short and we generated roughly about 500 pips if you traded aggressively staying in the British pound that time. So as you see, strategy number four is a great strategy. Just from the signals I, I showed you today uh, in the last couple of seconds here, you could have paid for the course probably five times over with all the money you could have made trading one contract or, or 100 uh, shares. But as we stated, we're reducing this tremendously down from 695 down to 495. Works in any market, comes with all the things we talked about, uh, nightly signals, uh, all, as well as my personal email uh, address. So if you're really interested in hopefully taking your trading to the next level, we, we really urge you to become members of Specialist Trading and purchase at least one of our strategies. Strategy number four being, uh, we feel, is one of our most consistent strategies. Now, as I stated, we're going to take some questions now, but if you'd like to just do some research on us or, or find out some more information, you can go to our sister site, which is Pro Trader Strategies. That's ProTraderStrategies.com. This is where we sell our individual strategies. You can learn more about them. Or you can contact our senior sales rep. That's Don Jans. You can contact him at donjans at protraderstrategies.com or call us directly at area code 310-844-7220.
So if you're still on the fence or you want a little bit more information, that's the best way to contact us or to, uh, to get any more information. Um, now, as I stated, we are at the portion of the presentation where if you have any questions, now is the time to, to ask. Please ask me anything and anything you'd like. Uh, as I stated, we have a number of different strategies, more strategies than strategy number four, but if you're thinking about starting with specialist trading, I know we have a number of members here that, have, uh, that are already currently trading strategy four, but if you're thinking about starting with us for the first time, that's probably one of the best strategies to start out with. First of all, because it covers any market and any time frame, and also because uh, it's so simple to use. I believe there are only five rules altogether, and it's basically a pattern recognition strategy. Okay. Uh, let's see, Andrew asks, Hi, Steve, do you have the add-ons for NinjaTrader? Yes, we do. We do have add-ons for NinjaTrader. We do have Strategy 4 add-ons, and it works great with NinjaTrader as well. I would contact uh, to Don and uh, give us a call if you want more information concerning that. Okay? But yes, we do. Um, so, uh, Tricky asks, so as I see, none of your strategies trade breakouts. That's a great question. Well, in a sense, they don't trade breakouts in the traditional form. I know most people look for breakouts, uh, you know, they look for high-level consolidation. Uh, they'll look for breakouts where you're going contra trend, or they'll look for certain ways that most people view a breakout. We will have some type of consolidations that use breakouts, but they're you know, with a few minor proprietary uh, things that have been edited to fit all of our uh, scenario. In other words, the components that we talk about today. So there, they, we do have some breakouts, but they're with our small editing and with our variables that fit our strategies, okay? But they're not your conventional type of breakouts. I, I hope that makes sense. We're looking, I, I'd say there'd be more of a, of a consolidation type of a, a pullback more than anything, okay? I know a lot of people like to look for breakouts, and they think, as I showed you in a couple of examples, where things just go straight up, we consolidate, and then they break out, and you have to jump on board. Uh, it's been my experience that without the components and without some other variables that we teach you, uh, many times those are basically fake-out breakouts. So we try to make sure that we don't get involved and step in those, and so we apply a few more techniques, a few more tips that I've accumulated, so that uh, even though they may appear to be breakouts, they have a lot more variables involved with them. Now, one of the things I, I like to, to focus and, and, and share with, especially to the beginning people, or beginners that are uh, attending my presentations, that I know how difficult it can be. I, I've been there. I've struggled myself. I know how difficult trading can be when you are trying to, you know, make some uh, movement forward and you just can't seem to be, you know, have any consistency or have any, uh, you know, forward movement. And it's very discouraging. Once again, I know how you feel. I've been there. But I think the best thing what we offer is that I've been trading roughly for 36 years. I've accumulated and uh, attained all of these things uh, for you already. So in other words, what we really do is we, we lessen or shorten your learning curve. You don't have to be trading 36 years in order to get to a point where you can be able to be consistent. With all the things we teach you and supply you with, uh, your learning curve will be uh, shortened tremendously because you'll be that much more ahead of the game. And so possibly in the next two to six months, you'll be right where uh, basically I have been after trading for 36 years. So this is what we're really trying to do and see you with the specialist edge and really shorten your learning curve by giving you all the information that I've accumulated in my, in my trading career. Any other questions before we uh, continue? It says, uh, Tricky also says, okay, thanks. Uh, in that case, which of your strategies applies to those breakouts? Well, <laughs> You know, they, they all in some sense will, I would say. I would say that strategy four at times would see more what appears to be a conventional breakout than anything else. But really, it, as I stated, there's more going on than meets the eye. Someone could say it's a traditional breakout, and if it meets all of our requirements, then yes, we will take a trade. But just because something appears to be a breakout, it must also meet our other requirements that we have within the rules. And so we may not take the trade. So I would probably say that strategy four uh, is the closest to that, if that uh, answers your question. Uh, you're not going to see a lot of, uh, uh, you know, classic pullbacks all the time. We have other strategies that do that as well. Um, Mark asks, hi Steve, how is your batting average with your best strategy? Well, uh, we only keep track of our daily bars because there are a million and one ways to trade our strategies, uh, Mark. Uh, and I thank you for asking. But remember, I started out the presentation saying we're an educational company. We're not a systematic company. We teach strategies, not systems. 
but we do keep records of all the signals that we generate for our members. So we've kept records on strategy number four, and I can just tell you that they're doing fine. I say, uh, basically, I would say uh, we've generated, I would say, close to 60%, upwards of 60% in the last year or two using strategy four. I know some other of our strategies have generated over 120%. Uh, this is particular strategy number five. So it depends on what market you're trading. It depends on what time frame, though. I mean, we have a lot of members who say, well, Steve, uh, give me your best strategy. Well, you know, it depends on what time frame you want. It depends on what uh, market you want. It depends on what uh, type of a trader. Are you aggressive or conservative? All we can tell you is that I think the best thing to do is, is do a Google search on us and that we have a lot of people that have talked in a lot of chat rooms and trading rooms that have just t told about the wonders of how well they've done with our strategies and you can see how well they perform, okay? Jeffrey asks, uh, which one is the day trading strategy? Well, it, once again, it depends on which market, but I would say for day trading, strategy four works extremely well. We also have another day trading strategy for the E-minis, which is strategy number six, which works extremely well. It really depends on which market you're looking at. Strategy number three for the Forex works better if you're day trading. And uh, strategy three for uh, stocks as well is, is great for day trading. But it all depends on what market you're looking at, what time frame, and uh, you know, what you really want to accomplish. Are you trying to trade 20 times a day? Or are you trying to trade one time a day? Uh, there's a lot of variables. Remember, we're an educational company, so we're trying to fit and mold you know, the, the format of these strategies to best suit your trading persona. I really don't believe that someone can trade exactly the exact same way someone else does. That's why we don't believe in trading rooms or, or chat rooms at specialist trading because we think that's a crutch. You fall into a major crutch when you start trying to mimic someone who has some type of consistency in your trading. Everyone comes to the plate with something different. They come with different ideas, different uh, persona. Someone may want to trade aggressively. Someone may want to trade conservatively. So you have to uh, you know, know what your you know, time frame is, what your specific time frame, what your tolerance is, what your... Uh, money management uh, risk reward ratios are and then we fit these formats to to uh, match your persona okay I hope that that answers your question and, and I do this personally through our you know uh, mentoring as well as supplying with you once we have some type of uh, interaction over email and I, and I tell you exactly what I feel is best for you and for what you should be a paper trading to get a good idea from okay um, Tricky asks once again, is strategy number four the best suited for trading intraday, the Forex or the E-mini? Uh, it Once again, it's Tricky, that depends on are you a conservative trader? Are you an aggressive trader? Uh, do you, what time frame do you like to use? Do you like to use four-hour charts or do you like to use uh, tick charts? It all really depends. I would say strategy number four is the best strategy that transfers over onto all time frames, okay? That's the best. We can't, uh, we can't really uh, use it uh, for, uh, to say just a broad scope of intraday trading. Uh, if you're looking for four-hour trading, uh, and it, what market? Are you talking about the uh, Forex markets? Are you talking about stock markets? Are we talking about E-mini? You see all these different variables. This is what we do on our courses. We fine-tune everything to fit you. Now, if you're trading the Forex markets on a four-hour time frame, I would probably say uh, strategy number five is our premier strategy for trading the forex markets in that time frame. Okay, if you're trading a four-hour chart on the E-mini, I think you'd have some success with strategy number four, but you may not have as many signals as you'd like. I don't know. I mean, once again, the best strategy for me intraday may be not the best strategy for you. I like to trade two to three times a day intraday because I'm busy giving webinars and teaching and answering emails. Someone else trading intraday might want to take 10 or 20 trades a day. So the way I trade strategy number four may not be the best for someone else. This is why it's best to call us, to have a consultation, or uh, once again, uh, to do a, a Google search on us and see how well people have uh, responded to our strategies, and then take advantage of that, uh, of that uh, great discount that we have in the next couple of days. I think if you want more information, the best thing would, to be, would be to call our senior sales rep. That's Don Jans, and you see the information right there. He can give you more information about all the, the different uh, strategies, the different discounts we have, which one fits better or not, and then you can uh, kind of mold and decide what's best for you, okay? I hope that answers your question. But this just goes to explain how I don't really feel that one strategy fits all people, all traders. Just to give you a short story, I once had a trader once who sat with me for a week and saw how I traded. He saw everything. He, he knew all the signals. He knew all the setups. 
And then after he sat with me for a week, he, he was fully uh, competent and knew exactly uh, where I would buy, where I would sell. And uh, so then he went to trade on his own. All right. I contacted him a couple of weeks later and asked him how he was doing. Since I had had a fairly couple of good weeks, I figured he must have been doing fairly well himself. And he said that uh, he had lost money. And, and I said, how could you lose money? If you knew my techniques and my method, the strategy I'm currently trading, there's no way you would have lost money. But see, the point was he was coming from a different approach. He was a more conservative trader than I was. And this is when I realized that no two people can trade the same way. He couldn't pull the trigger the same way. He couldn't use the same stop placement. He couldn't use the same exit placement. So this is when I started formulating all these different things I had learned for different ways in which to trade strategies. As long as you have the sound groundwork in place, the framework, but you can apply these different variables, short little sweet uh, variables to fit your style, that's when you'll become successful. But I really don't believe you can go to a trading room and mimic someone and think that you're going to be successful as well. So this is what we do. This is the education and the expertise we provide for all of our members. Okay, I hope that explains it. And I, I hope that the, uh, it kind of boils it down to making it more clear of an answer. Okay, we have a few more uh, minutes before we sign off. And uh, I, once again, want to thank you so much for attending today. I know you took time out of your uh, trading here to come watch this presentation. And as a special uh, you know, uh, treat for all of you, once again, we are really discounting that uh, price of the strategy number four down from $695 to $495, okay? Be sure and call up our uh, sales rep, Don Jans, and ask him about any other specials we may be having, current specials as well. You can purchase a full suite of roughly upwards of 10 presentations, or, or should say 10 webinars, I'm sorry, 10 courses, <laughs> or you can purchase one individual uh, strategy if you'd like. So it's up to you, but call us or give us an email, and we'll be sure and, and answer any question you may have, okay? Thank you so much for attending. I wish you a great holiday. Look forward to seeing you at our next presentation, and best of luck trading. Bye-bye.